getting ready to repair this Canadian-made Arthur Hensel Minerva guitar made in the 1940s. It features scalped X bracing and solid body woods. Someone stripped the finish off this mahogany back and sides and there's a nasty crack on the back that I'll have to fix. By measuring to the 12th fret and then by measuring to the saddle, it shows the saddle is about 3 eighths of an inch too far back for the strings to intonate properly. I'll have to make a new bridge and move it forward. Luckily the pinholes are in the right place. The back was separated from the end block, so I had to inject some glue here, then clamp it up. There were some areas also separated in the neck block area, so they had to be glued up and also clamped. This is a pretty bad crack, so to fix this properly we have to splice in a piece of mahogany. I get a piece of mahogany, then take a hooked razor blade and I also have a little scraper blade and I make this splice V-shaped. Then I go to the guitar and make the crack also V-shaped. Here I'm test fitting and then I glue in the splice. Here taking off all the excess glue. Whatever's still sticking up, I get rid of with my long chisel here. Then a couple of gaps that are still remaining, I put some super glue on. This job's made a lot easier by the fact there's no finish on it. Here I'm using some dye to darken up this new splice. I use these magnets so that I can locate by feel where the cleat goes to repair the crack. These big magnets are good and strong and they'll be useful for clamping the cleat on. Put some glue on, get it in place and then put the magnets on. The back braces are either loose or completely loose. We'll have to glue them in place. I clean up the loose ones. This is my clamp selection I'll use to clamp them up. First I syringe in some glue and then add the various clamps. Some outside clamps help to make sure they're good and tight. Here's another back brace being glued and then another one. I filled the grain with grain filler and then I'm lightly sanding it with 320 to get it ready to do the clear coats. After a few coats of that, then we wet sand with wet and dry paper. Then with the grain and eventually buff it out. It's done, but it turned out a little bit too shiny. So what I did was take a 4,000 or so micro mesh and water and then sand in the direction of the grain. I've decided to replace the frets. To do that, I heat them with a the soldering iron, then with the end nippers, carefully remove each one. Then I take some sandpaper and smooth out the fretboard. There are a lot of uses for a wood plane with the blade taken out and then emery cloth, double-sided taped on the bottom. Here I'm using one to help true up the fretboard. And there it is all ready for the new frets to go in. The new frets are in and I'm filing the ends flush. Here I use a modified aluminum level with emery cloth on the bottom to level the fret grounds. This diamond stone also works good for this. I put marker on top of the frets so that I can tell when I'm recrowning that it's done properly. This file is good where the fretboard meets the body. And I use this diamond covered nail file to get rid of the sharp ends at the end of the fret. Here I'm using 320 and then after that 400 wet and dry paper on a rubber block. Then some 4-0 steel wool and then some lemon oil. 
Now to get to work on the new bridge. The wings of the bridge can do on the drill press. And now I'm measuring out the new peg holes. And there it is. It has to go that much more forward than the old bridge. Right to here. I have to put some finish on the bare wood area. Before gluing, I have to remove the old finish. And then here's the bridge glued on. The bridge plate needs some help, so I'm going to glue this in place. And now to route out the saddle slot. And there it is finished. Cats are always interested in this kind of activity. I use this jig to adjust the neck angle. The grease pencil allows me to put the neck in and then see where it rubs so that I can take off more from the little shim that I added. And then some final work with a piece of sandpaper. And there it is glued in place and I'm removing the glue flow out. The 13th fret steaming holes I drilled to remove the neck were not very effective. Here I am re-gluing the sound hole trim and these old tuners need some lubrication. This is uh, Mobile One Synthetic. Making a new bone saddle here. And then to the band saw to make a new nut. Some more shaping involved here. Test fitting. More shaping. And then roughing in the slots for the strings. Some tea helps to age the nut, make it look more natural. This is finish setting of the nut slot depths. For an even better aging effect, I cracked the lacquer using an inverted compressed air can. Well, this Hensel is mostly done. I'll just tune it to pitch and check the action. It's still a little bit high, so I need to lower the saddle, and I'll set the arch on it at the same time. This project's done. It's been a lot of work, but I think worth it. This is how it sounds. <laughs>